Welcome back to The Breakfast. And now we move into Today in History and share with you some things that happened on the 5th of February many years ago. Uh, this one is starting with um, you know, an event that occurred in 1963, the murder of uh, an, a leader of the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. His name was uh, Medgar Evers. It was on this day in 1994 that Byron Dela Beckwith was found guilty and convicted of uh, the murder. Um, he was a white supremacist, uh, Dilla Beckwith. He was convicted um, of the murder 30 years after the crime occurred. Um, Evers, uh, in 1963, was gone down in his driveway somewhere in Jackson, Mississippi, um, in front of his home, actually. His wife and, and the two, uh, three kids that he, they had were all at home at that time. And looking back in history, um, and the... the um, 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 NAACP uh, person, and that is uh, Medgar Evers now, was um, very, very, very popular then and returned to his country after fighting to now be experiencing discrimination in the racially divided South. Uh, Myrie Evers, who's his wife, who later became the third woman to chair the NAACP, refused to abandon her husband's case and continued to fight for it even, you know, 30 decades later. And at this time, when this case or this conviction was finally given, uh, Dilla Beckwith, who was the murderer, was living in uh, somewhere in, in Tennessee. He was extradited to Mississippi for trial um, in the courthouse in Jackson. Before his trial, he also, of course, tried to uh, kill the case and asked the judge to dismiss the case uh, against him on the grounds that it violated his rights to a speedy trial. But, of course, that didn't work. During the trial, the third uh, the murder weapon was presented. It was a rifle and still had his fingerprints on it. He claimed that the gun was stolen from his house. And, of course, uh, eventually went on to play, you know, certain games, listing health problems, high blood pressure, lack of energy and kidney problems and a lot of other things, you know, just to try to delay the trial and find a way around it. Um, they eventually convicted uh, Dale Beckwith of first-degree murder for killing Medgar Evers, and he was sentenced to life in prison. New evidence also included testimony that he had boasted of the murder at a Ku Klux Klan rally. And uh, he boasted to others even during the three decades that passed since the crime had occurred. Um, he was 70, 71 years old when he was convicted in 1994 and eventually died in prison in the year 2001, aged 80 years. Ooh. Hmm. Yeah. Deep um, story. So, so interesting points in this one is how justice delayed is not justice denied. Um, in a few you know, cases, sometimes people would argue that, well, if it takes that long, then it's, it's of, of no use anymore. But um, it took 30 years, but um, eventually he was still found guilty and was still sentenced to life imprisonment, even when he was 71. Um, even, you know, regardless of all the, you know, the tactics that were brought in to try to delay or to deny him, uh, deny uh, Mega Evers justice, um, he still was able to get the justice that he, that he sought. And so, yeah, um, um, it's something that I feel that we should try somehow, some way to adapt here in Nigeria. The crimes that occurred in 1960 here in Nigeria, 1967, that occurred in 1991, that we shouldn't just throw away. You know, there should be further investigations. Let, let's, let's bring back some court cases and, and actually find some people guilty. Yes, possible. even even in Africa, you see cases, like, I mean, even until recently, uh, Rwanda was still trying people alleged of, you know, committing crimes during that genocide. Yes. But we just hope that we're able to adapt that and find justice for our own entire victims in Lagos. Absolutely. And uh, still today in history, February 5th, uh, 2020, Donald Trump, former U.S. president, was acquitted by the United States Senate in his impeachment trial. So Trump had been impeached, and that's on the basis of seeking improp improperly seeking help from Ukraine to boost his chances of election. So the argument was that it's illegal to ask foreign entities for help in winning an election. I basically asked them to investigate a political rival and dig up damaging information against him uh, so he could you know, have leverage to win the election. But uh, he was impeached in December. A trial took place that could have led to the president's being removed, but in the end, he was cleared. He was you know, acquitted from uh, all the allegations. The Democrats said, yes, indeed, the, the, the crime he was alleged of committing was valid, but that it wasn't enough for him to be removed from office. That's, that's basically the long and short of the story. He was abused of, you know, uh, he was charged for abuse of power. Uh, he was accused of 
a scheme using the levers of government to coerce U Ukraine to do his political bidding. And then we saw again when he was impeached you know, regarding the, I think, January 6th, Sixth invasion uh, of the when they, exactly, invasion of the Capitol building, accused of you know, inciting people to go and attack, basically saying, insisting that he won the US election, even though evidence you know, showed otherwise. Uh, now he's, uh, he's out of office, someone else is in there. And uh, that's basically what There's happened There's still conversations today. about whether he will be um, impeached or found guilty of uh, that, and we'll see how that turns out. Mm -hmm. The um, um, part where, and, and if you remember, not long ago I spoke about having institutions. So this is a, a clear you know, example of why institutions um, should be more powerful than, than individuals. Yes. So what Donald Trump was found guilty of, even if eventually the Senate um, um, acquitted him, um, is a clear example of, you know, abuse of power, abuse of the seat of the President of the United States, abuse of uh, uh, the authority of the President of the United States. And when he tried to, you know, coerce and to force Ukraine to investigate Joe Biden's son, um, it was interpreted, you know, as, as total abuse of power. Um, here in Nigeria, um, we don't have institutions that take over, you know, when they are needed. We have instead people who seem to be more powerful than these institutions that can extend a person's tenure for another three months or maybe for another one year we, without We, we even have, questioned. I mean, if, you, if you're trying to bring this back home, remember when the Senate, I think, invited the president? And remember so many times when even courts would invite people to show up for hearings and they refused to answer. It's really all circles back to the issue of institutions yes. and the failure of them or the lack of them, basically. The, the, in, the in weakness, Nigeria. really, the of these weakness, institutions really. and, and you know, how they should function. The Nigerian, the National Assembly itself, you you know, all, has also shown a few times that it, it, it seems to lack the power that, um, you know, it normally is given or is, is, um, um, it has, you know, by the Constitution. Um, at times like this, we should see the National Assembly step up and say, no, this is wrong, you know, and, and um, this shouldn't um, work. Yes. But we don't have that happen. Neither do we have um, other ministries, department agencies, you know, if you step in. And I remember um, many times when um, the Constitution has been, you know, gone against or our laws have been broken, and there's Nigerians who would defend it. There are people who would defend it and say, well, uh, sometimes we need a strong hand mm -hmm. in office. Sometimes Nigeria needs a uh, tough hand, you know, to be able to bid the country back into into a position. But it's it's absolutely wrong, and yes. uh, things like that shouldn't happen. So, True. yeah, Donald Trump, clear example of how institutions should work. Yes, we need to shift our loyalty from people to the country. Absolutely. So, yes, that's it uh, for today in history, February 5th, 2020. And, of course, uh, same February 5th, 1994. Uh, we're going on a short break. When we come back, we're speaking now about the major topic across the country this morning, the president extending the tenure of uh, IGP uh, Mohamed Adamu and also uh, well, making former service chiefs, the ex-service chiefs now going to be career ambassadors. What does that really mean and how does that affect you know, where we are as a country today? We'll be back after this short break. <laughs> 